It is good then. Yes. Very good. Sargeras will be pleased. There it was again, Xavius thought. The Great One's true name. And what a glorious name it was. We will work the portal the moment the spell is set in place. First will come the host. Then, when all is ready, my lord himself. Hakkar then approached, looking almost pathetic now, ever since Manoroth had arrived. Forgive this interruption, but one of my hunters has returned. Only one? So it seems. And what have you learned from it? They found two with the scent of otherness that the Lord Night Elf spoke of, plus one of his own kind with them. But in the hunt they fell afoul of a being of power. Now it was Manoroth's turn to display a slight hint of uncertainty. Not. No, I think not. Perhaps with a touch of their power, perhaps a guardian left behind. The two then discussed something that sounded significant, but was completely lost on Lord Xavius. But taking a risk, he then interrupted. Was there a description of this creature of power? Aye. Hakar then conjured a tiny image of the creature in question. Seen through the eyes of the fell beast, an antlered entity. Seeing the image, the Lord Counselor then frowned. The legend is true, then. The Forest Lord is real. You know this creature? Ancient myths speak of the Forest Lord, a demigod called Cenarius. He's said to be the child of the Mother Moon. <laughs> Nothing, then. He will be dealt with. What about the others? Hakar quickly obeyed, his conjured image shifting to that of a green-skinned, muscly brute, a young night elf, and a weird-looking red-haired freak. A curious trio. The warrior shows much promise. I would see more of his kind. Learn their potential. What? That beast? Surely not. It's more grotesque than a dwarf. Manoroth ignored that, changing the subject to the red-haired figure. A spindly creature. With wary eyes. A creature of magic, I think. More fell beasts could be sent to find them. You really are a one-trick pony, aren't you? We send fell beast and fell guard. Only this time, the objective will be capture. Capture? They must be studied. Their strengths, their weaknesses, in case there are others. Can the fell guard be spared? There will soon be many more. Lord Night Elf, are your highborn prepared? They are ready to do what they must, to see the glorious fulfillment of our dream. The cleansing of the world of all that is- The world will be cleansed, Lord Night Elf. You may trust to that. I leave the hunt to you, Master. Do not fail again. I can't then bug it off to get right on that. And now, Lord Night Elf, let us begin the moulding of your people's future. Meanwhile... <laughs> if it isn't a bit of old dragon meat, Cory Elstras. You've been around the lesser races much too long. Their weakness has rubbed off on you. Shut up! You're of no use to anyone. Shut up! A horrendous sandstorm then filled the screen. However, instead of facing Deathwing, Krasis now found himself looking at a different dragon. Lost Dormer. We are stretched through all. We see all. What? All ends lead to nothing. All ends. But one. What do I do? Instead of answering that question in a straightforward manner with words, Dragon Nozdormu's form shifted again, this time to a random night elf. Well, who the bloody hell is that? Annoyingly, the sandstorm then filled the screen again, only this time, the sand itself ripped at Kratos' flesh, and it bloody hurt. Well, that's embarrassing. Are you alright? Krasis attempted to speak, but immediately realised he was still very dizzy. Take it easy. You need more rest. I don't need rest, Krasis thought. I need this subtle shit spell that the Earth Warder has cast upon me removed. But there was nothing anyone could do about that for the time being. How far are we from the land of the Night Elves? We can take you there soon enough. But what happened back there? This concerns that matter. But my course has changed. I believe I was contacted by the Timeless One. I think he was trying to tell me something. It was a dream. A nightmare. That's all. I don't think the aspect of time would reach out to you. Alex Straza, perhaps. 
but not you. No, I believe he may have the truth of it, Coriolstras. If he says the Timeless One touched his thoughts, I suspect he states fact. Well, then I bow to your wisdom, my love. I need to get to the Night Elves. There's one thing I seek. I just pray I'm not already too late. Alexstrasza's head tilted to the side a little bit. Is all you told me before still truth? All of it. It is. But I fear there's much more. The dragons, all dragons, will be needed for a struggle. With Nordstormu absent, a consensus cannot be reached. The others will not agree to anything. Then you must convince them. Go against tradition. You could very well be all that stands between the world and oblivion. And with that, Gracious went ahead and told them about the Burning Legion. A tale of blood, of decimation, of soulless evil. But still, they may still not decide. We watch the world, but we leave its progress in the hands of the younger races. Even Neltharion, the warder of Earth itself, prefers to leave it that way. Gracious really wanted to tell them about Neltharion as well, but even thinking about the guy made his head swim. I know you will do what you must, and you must do what you will. Go to the Night Elves and seek your answer. Alexstrasza then turned to her consort. I ask that you go with him, Coriolstras. You ask and I'm happy to oblige. I also ask that you follow his lead. Trust me when I say that he has wisdom which will be of value to you. It was not entirely clear if Coriolstras believed that last part, but he nodded anyway. Night has fallen. Will you wait until light? I've already waited far too long as it is. Meanwhile again, inside a cell within Blackrook Hold, once again, my Lord Ravencrest, I must request that these outsiders be turned over for proper questioning. You've already had the Beastman and lost him. He was to come to me anyway. This simply shortens the procedure. There's more to them than what we see on the surface. Illidan, I would hear from you. Mavurian's brother looked slightly unwell, but answered quickly. Yes, my lord. He is my brother. That's as obvious as night and day, my boy. And the commander then studied Illidan's twin. I know something of you, lad. Just as I know something of your brother. Your name is Malfiorian, yes? Yes, my lord. You rescued this creature? I did. And you've an excellent reason why? One that would excuse this heinous act? I doubt you would believe me, my lord. Oh, I can come to believe many things, young one. If they're spoken in honesty. Can you do that? I... I'll try. So, Malfurion went ahead and explained things. His studies under Scenarius, which immediately caused his audience to raise doubtful eyebrows. He explained his reoccurring dreams, his exploration of the Emerald Dream, the disconcerting things he saw within. The only thing he didn't mention was his fear that Queen Ashara herself was involved. That might be a little bit too much for people to handle. And after finishing, Ravencrest looked towards the Moon Guard that was in attendance. Has your order noticed any such trouble? The well is more turbulent than usual. That could be from misuse. But such an incredible fiction as this. Yes, it is incredible. The commander then turned to Illidan. What say you concerning your brother? He's never been one for delusions, my lord. As to whether it's the truth. Indeed. Still, I wouldn't put it past Lord Xavius and the Highborn to instigate some devilment, without her knowledge. They act as if the Queen is their prized possession, and no one else has a right to her. Even the Moonguard bloke nodded at that. Elitist bastards, those Highborn. If I may, once we've settled matters here, I will pass on word to the heads of our order. They'll put into motion surveillance of the Highborn and their activities. I should be most interested in that. Young Malfurion. Your story, on the assumption that it is for the most part truth, explains some of your actions. But how does it fit into your freeing of the prisoner, a treasonous crime? I can perhaps answer that. Considering Night Elves weren't the most tolerant of other races, Malfurion wasn't sure it was a good idea for Ronin to suddenly start talking. But, go ahead. In my land, a strange magical anomaly opened up. My people sent me, and Brox's people sent him. We both discovered it separately, and were drawn unwillingly through it. He ended one place, I ended another. And how does this pertain to young Malfurion? He believes, as do I, that this anomaly was caused by the spellwork mentioned. 
This green-skinned creature does not seem like one who would be sent to investigate sorcery or magic. My war chief commanded I go. So I went. I cannot speak for orcs, but I am certainly adept at magic. There was a brief pause, but the Moonguard sorcerer then nodded. He may not have known exactly what Ronin was, but he could recognise someone versed in the arts. Perhaps I'm getting old, but I'm inclined to believe much of this. Well, I remain undecided. We cannot take such claims on faith alone. There must still be an internal interrogation. Did I say otherwise? Ravencrest then snapped his fingers, and a bunch of guards suddenly seized Malfurion. I would like to test the faith I've placed in my new personal sorcerer. Illidan, we must ascertain the absolute truth, however distasteful that might seem to you. I trust I can rely on you to prove to us that all your brother says is true. Illidan swallowed hard, but then looked beyond Malfurion. My brother's word I trust, my lord, but I can't say the same for the robed creature. On the one hand, Malfurion appreciated Illidan's attempt to avoid using his powers on him, but he wasn't a big fan of Ronin or Brock's suffering instead. However, Lord Commander, this is absurd. An unsanctioned spellcaster is also the brother of one of the prisoners. Bit of a conflict of interest, wouldn't you say? In accordance with our laws, any and all magical matters are the responsibility and right of the Moon Guard to oversee. The Moon Guard sorcerer then stepped forward, but, my lord, I will interrogate my brother. Unfortunately, the master of Blackrock Hold let out a big sigh. The Lord shall be followed. He's yours, Moonguard. But only if you do the questioning here and now. Agreed. Consider in your work that he may be telling the truth. Fine. Hold his head straight. The guards holding Malfurion positioned him accordingly, whilst the elven sorcerer placed his hands on Malfurion's face. And that was followed by an immediate shock. And then another one. And another one. Struggle not. Release your secrets. Malfurion really wanted to release his secrets, but he didn't really know how to. His mind then raced with memories of everything he'd already told the Gathering. But this time, it did include his belief of Ashara's involvement and duplicity. The shocks to his face then ceased, and his legs buckled beneath him as he almost passed out. He didn't but it's important to remember that it almost happened, and gradually became aware of shouts of disbelief around the room. However, as Malfurion's mind cleared a little bit more, he realised his brother was now standing in front of him, not the Moon Guard. Why didn't you give in immediately? Two hours. Do you even have a mind left? Two hours? Oh, praise the loon. After you spouted that nonsense about the Queen, that old fool was determined to rip everything from your head regardless of cost. If not for his spell failing suddenly, he probably would have left you an empty husk. His... his spell failed? This barely made any sense, Malfurion thought. All of their spells failed. After he lost control of the first, he tried another. And when that didn't work, his companion attempted a third. No success. It's as if we've been cut off from the well. Then it's begun. Hmm? What has? Meanwhile, outside Ashara's palace, night elves from across the entire continent had already started to gather, panicked, confused, feeling the loss of their connection to the well. Surely Ashara, their queen, their light of the moons of the moons of the light of the moons or whatever, would have answers. But, twas not the queen that came out of said gates, twas an army. 